It is the Riot Podcast. It's uh, just the two of us today Aww, on welcome. Friday, July 8th. To your last podcast for the week. Uh, nope, the chair's empty over there. Uh-huh. Do you miss Isaiah or do you feel like it was nice to have a break today? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's bittersweet, <laughs> I'll say. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it, you know, it's good to have him around, but it was quieter in here. And less antagonistic towards me, so, you know. <laughs> I think he'd say the same thing. It's nice to be away from when uh-huh. you antagonize uh-huh. him. Uh-huh. So <laughs> and th- I'm just here in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be the peacemaker today. That's right. Well, yes, Isaiah's out today on the podcast, uh, but he'll be returning on Monday. So today in the podcast, of course, we had to talk about Aaron Rodgers' tattoo and the yeah. flack that he's getting for it and the flack that uh, people are giving me for it. Because you're an Aaron Rodgers fan. Because I'm a I'm a fan, and people are saying I'm going to follow in his footsteps. Believe me, I wish I could. See, I, I wish I could. As someone who's outside of like, I'm also in the middle uh-huh. <laughs> of the Aaron yeah. Rodgers stuff. I feel like he could have gotten a tattoo. Of, no matter what he would have gotten, yep. everybody would have just made fun of him. Exactly. Uh, but he did go bold for his very first tattoo. To say the least. Yeah. yeah he uh, he went out there with it. Uh, when he does something, he does it big. I and guess. he did a big first tattoo. So we uh, we get to that right early on in the podcast. And you've never had one before, but uh-huh. when you get your first tattoo, yeah. oh, it becomes so addicting. You're just like, well, let me just go get a few more. Uh, why oh, don't no. I? So that means we're going to have more Aaron Rodgers I mysteries to decipher. I bet he's going to have a, a few more within the next, before the season starts. Yeah, especially if he sticks around with this uh, blue gal he's yeah. been hanging around with. Uh, we also get to discuss uh, some goofiness in uh, in politics. Not in the U.S., though. Uh, but it also that happens to involve a lot of me singing songs with no words. I love it. You're yeah. going to love it, guys. It is... Uh, Favorite part. We might have our episode taken down because it's at it's uh the copyright yeah it's just uh, you're not allowed to use music uh in that way so i hope i didn't do it too much justice to the songs i sing because if you're too close then we could get a copyright strike uh, we'll get sued sued by the companies that own these uh songs uh and let's see what else you know we talked about new movies this weekend uh bears uh, running of the bulls. So yeah, it's a wide variety of stuff. That well, we Julia get to. had talked to us. She, she just texted uh-huh. uh, during the show and said Thor was really good last mm. night. So if you see Thor, um, forget the other stuff. Just if you see Thor only, uh-huh. let us know if you see it over the weekend. Uh, so on Monday we can come back and talk more about how it did. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it next week sometime. Because well, I mean, if I was gonna go see it this weekend, that. I would have had to have bought my tickets by now. Oh, yeah, they're mostly otherwise gone. Otherwise, I'll be sitting in uh, just the far, far back of the theater. I won't even be able to see. Well, so. I couldn't go, but Eric has one ticket for later tonight. He didn't invite you? Uh, no, yeah. No one wants to take me to oh, the movies. Oh, you can go with no, me. I can't go. Me I, and my wife will do, you can be the third wheel Oh, yeah, I'd love Tuesday to do that. Night. That's yeah. so exciting. <laughs> so he is actually going to see it tonight. So I'll see if he thinks it's worthy All to right. watch. You can. Uh, he did invite me. I just can't go. Oh, man. Well, uh, well. I hope you get to see it sometime, uh, but not as soon as I do. <laughs> you want to go see it first. Uh, yeah. Well, enjoy the podcast. Make sure you say hi and text over the weekend at 877 to Radio U. Um, and of course, always join us at Radio U Riot on our Facebook page or make sure you're following and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Enjoy. Enjoy the, the weekend. Yeah. Catch you next time. Why are Hudson, Nikki and Isaiah always eating on the show? The more we feed them, the less they talk. The Riot. Radio U. No doubt, Nikki, you saw this going around on your Instagram, right? You follow Aaron Rodgers, I'm sure. I do not, but it was like the first thing Nene said yesterday. Yeah. He's like, have you seen Aaron Rodgers' I know. He, uh, I, <laughs> word got around that Nene was mocking me on his show, even. Uh-oh. Uh, because, so Aaron Rodgers has a new tattoo. Some are calling wacky. Is this Some his are calling first goofy. one or yeah. just a, a new one? First tattoo ever for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, and that was a lot of work. Like, that's a big tattoo for your first for your first go, don't, wouldn't you say? I haven't looked at it yet. Oh, you haven't looked? I'm ready. Oh, you got to see this. Oh. Uh, it takes up, like, his whole forearm. <sighs> I feel like that's the influence of other people. <laughs> Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying. Are those lions? There's two lions. Is that a fan uh, uh, in the ocean? Yep, there's uh, there's a fan. There's uh, some astronomy symbols. Constellation. The eye, the eye of Providence. Uh, a view of the sea from a porthole. All right. <laughs> what is he trying to say with all this? Uh, that's, that's what nobody knows. He says, uh, his quote is, 
There's a deep and meaningful story and connection to absolutely each element of this art piece. And I'll share a little more about that one day. All right. So one day we can all just sit and wait for Aaron Rodgers to tell the story of what the meaning behind. I mean, it's going to be a long story. I mean, it's a you can tell. it's a very uniquely ornately done tattoo. Uh-huh. It's just I I guess I didn't think it fits Aaron Rodgers uh, style. Uh huh. So I think that's what maybe people are having problems with. It's very uh, well. A lot of people are saying that it's very it, it's actually very similar to tattoos that. His reported girlfriend has. Yeah, that's blue. Okay, that's the not witch. It really does seem like an if you uh, from that. if you scroll down a little further, you'll you can see some of the tattoos she has, and she has some of the exact same elements oh. in her tattoos. So it can't be can't be a coincidence. But uh, it is crazy. I mean, he hasn't been with her that long. I know. He's already but... letting. I mean, he's never gotten a tattoo before. But maybe she's letting him, or she. He's letting her drop tattoos for him. But I mean, if he uh, is gravitating towards a person like that, then uh-huh. maybe that's just his style that he doesn't show could as be. much. So this could reflect uh, a deeper part of Aaron Rodgers that we didn't know about. Yeah, he really seems to uh, to to you know f- to be very influenced by the people he dates. Uh, they they change him a lot every every single time. But uh, people, of course, the internet not a fan. Of the tattoo because well, it's could, uh could not have gotten Rogers. one that but <laughs> that people would have liked that would have been maybe nice like around the calf area or something yeah just you know right there on your arm because now you're gonna see it when he's like actually out on the field playing football maybe he wants that motivation yeah he wants that's to be able right to see he'll just look down at the game. symbols he'll, maybe it's uh it's gonna tell him which plays to call or something like that he's like here let me look at the stars on yeah, my uh-huh. or the lion yeah, lion yeah. where will you tell yeah, me where to go the stars have a line this is the time to throw <laughs> this pass i don't know you know what you know what i hope it means what i hope it means that green bay is going to win the super bowl this oh, year oh yeah that's a sign that, i'm pretty sure, sure if you uh if you can decipher this that's oh. that's what it translates to hang on i'm going to look through the porthole <laughs> <laughs> i see the super bowl in the porthole yes that's what i'm hoping <laughs> that's what i'm looking for well congratulations to him aaron Rodgers. On his very first, very large piece uh, for a tattoo. Now, That's quite the one to start off with. Nene was saying that, uh, like his his joke was, "Oh, I bet you Hudson gets this exact same tattoo within a year." <laughs> hey, you know what? If the Packers win the Super Bowl, you might. I just might. I just might. Thanks for the idea, Nene. Yeah. <laughs> you almost missed hearing this one. We just couldn't let that happen. The worst of the riot. Radio U. It's time for our Friday tradition. Ooh, box office time. Looking at uh, what's new to watch this weekend. And uh, the top choice is obvious. Thor, Love, and Thunder See, is I'm out now. Kind of curious how it'll actually do because I look back, you know, a few weeks. Obviously, Top Gun's still like top movie of the year. Yeah. But then remember the uh, Jurassic World that came out? Uh huh. I feel like that's kind of, it's kind of fizzled a bit. That, that did really. Surprisingly well, uh, like it's better than they weekend. were expecting opening weekend and kind of tapered off since then. It did really well opening weekend, but had like pretty poor reviews. Uh-huh. For Thor, I feel like it's in between. Like the reviews aren't the best. No. Not as bad as dinosaur reviews, uh-huh. but not the best. They're, I'm looking at them. They don't even quite look as good as uh, Multiverse of Madness. Sure. Uh, the Doctor the Strange Doctor movie, Strange. which did really well also. But uh, that one, the people that felt like it got a bad reputation because the people that didn't like it really didn't like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, and the people that liked it, most of us uh, only kind of liked it. But for uh, Thor, I just haven't heard the same, you know, oh, everybody's going this weekend, right. that sort of stuff. So I, I'm it, sure it'll have a big weekend. It had all of the, it's had all of the hype going into it, but now that it's here, it doesn't feel, and then the reviews started coming out, it doesn't feel, it feels like already that's died down. I'm looking at the Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, it's only got... 68 percent for critics for critics for, that's yeah. not high for a for a marvel movie uh that's on the lower end most of the time they're much more uh much more well received there are some really great critic reviews though that i'm looking at i love this one this is a guy uh jake wilson from the age in australia he says it's all a bit of monty python a bit of wes anderson but mostly Reminiscent of the kind of self-mocking TV ad that draws on classical mythology to sell chocolate or get us to switch mobile plans. All right. That's, that's quite that's a review. Rough. That, is, uh, that is rough, but I don't know. I guess I, I kind of get it. Uh, I hope it's not that bad. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking at the reviews. Most of the uh, the the best 
they just don't seem that great. Well, so. you know what? Sometimes the movies, like the reviews, just aren't that great. Yeah. But they're still well, fun. A lot of people, a lot we'll of them come fun. down to it's just more of Ragnarok as if that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'll take even... I, I would take two more hours of Ragnarok. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like, agree. I'm not, I'm not going to complain about that. Well, here's the final review I'll give you for Thor. Uh-huh. Uh, they said, if you love 1980s pop culture and screaming goats, then Love and Thunder's for you. I think uh, <laughs> I, I can get behind that. So we'll see. How, of course, we'll see on Monday how it does. But yeah. that's, that's the one we're most interested in. Now, let's say you either either the reviews have put you off or you're just not a Marvel person, or maybe you have time for more than one movie in your weekend. What if you need something else? Is there other things? They're on Netflix, because they can't go a weekend without putting out something. So uh, their best option, their biggest movie this weekend, is a movie called Hello, Goodbye, and Everything in Between. Oh, all right. It is a story about a high school couple that's been their senior year together, but they've made a pact to break up before college. Before they leave for college. Yeah, and I'm going to guess. What do you think, Nikki? That they, they, they love each other up. and don't, oh, they don't, don't spoil break it. Up. Don't spoil it. <laughs> what if they do? <laughs> if, if, if I, can, I haven't do. seen it, so it's not spoiling. <laughs> it I'm matter. totally guessing. I don't think you are. <laughs> I think, uh, but uh, I mean, this is a spoiler. If you've read Jennifer E. Smith's uh, novel, about of the same name, I'm guessing. Then, uh, then you probably already know how it goes down. Mm. Uh, what you want something else? Does well, that not I'm speak to you? I'm looking through the list, and it, it seems like really, if you just left it at Thor, that's yeah, fine. That's, that's all that's good enough. There. There's not a lot else in theaters. There's another. There's some other kids movie. Uh, well, and I mean, who's who's to say it's a kids movie? But it's called The Sea Beast, and oddly enough, the star of the movie is a is Carl Urban who is Billy Butcher from The Boys, oh, okay. which is not a kid's movie. No, it's not. That's, not that's kids the other entertain- side. That's complete. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> an interesting uh, switch up for him, but that's what, you've, uh, that's what you're looking at for this weekend. I love it. There's always way more streaming releases than you realize. Yeah, there is you go so down the list. Much there's, there's more stuff that goes into theaters than you realize, too, and most of it is just uh, a whole lot of nothing. Well, let us know if you saw Love and Thunder last night or if you're planning on seeing it this weekend, because we always like to get your opinion and then decide if anybody. Yeah. Basically, Hudson likes to see things on the Tuesday day uh-huh. when it's uh, is a half price or much cheaper. It's I think it's. More like less than less half than price. Half price. Yeah. And so we just want to make sure we're making the right choice if it's good. I want to spend my $5 carefully on Tuesday. <laughs> and, and get sh- your free popcorn. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like these two need to do a little less TikToking and a little more tick listening. The Riot with Nikki and Hudson. Radio U. We just talked about all the movies you could be watching this weekend. Oh, just say it how it really was. The movie. The movie that you could watch <laughs> this weekend. But I know Nikki's not going to be watching any movies because she's going to be watching. Uh, something completely different. The bear cams. Ooh, is it that time? It's that time of year. Now, okay, wait. Is it the fat bear time of the year? No. That's later in the fall, right? This is, uh, yeah, right. I think that I, I don't know when fat bear time is, but I know it's not now. That's where. This is where the bears are getting fat. That's where you get to vote on like, oh, your favorite bears uh-huh. uh, before they start to hibernate. Yeah. And so these are like the salmon cams. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've seen this those. This is where you get to see the bears in action. They do this every year uh, in a Brooks Falls in Alaska at uh, Katmai National Park where they've got live bear cams that are just focused on uh, you know the little tiny waterfalls and mm-hmm. the, the brooks and streams and whatever and uh, and that all the bears that gather there to uh, to eat to eat all the salmon they can handle so let's see is anything going on right now well I did look this is the same location where fat bear week happens uh-huh. but I think fat bear week is more like in October yeah so this is we're just looking in on them as they eat oh it's nighttime still there oh so the lights are out wake so up guys not a lot of bear <laughs> action going on I guess there is quite a bit of time difference between us in Alaska. Dude, I totally want to go to Alaska. Yeah. I do. That... I would love that for a trip. Would you just like to go and uh, and hang out at the falls? Well, you know, like I'm a camper now. Uh-huh. Uh, so I think I would think it would be pretty cool to take one part of Alaska and then just camp and drive through it all. Yeah. Oh, that would well, that'd take a while. It's dangerous. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's for sure. Somehow I feel like it's more dangerous than like, oh, I want to camp Florida. I think you could, uh, <laughs> you'd run out of gas along the way, you know, just because there's so few gas stations probably in such oh, a big, sure. wide expanse. You got to really plan ahead. 
Uh, I am watching the bear cam. It looks like... Uh, is that rain? Is it raining? It's raining. There's a lot of birds, I think, going around. So they're up and at them early. Well, come on, bears. Let's, yeah. I mean, you want to be on the show or not? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have nothing to report <laughs> on the uh, on the actual in- current bear situation. But, uh, I mean, these are 24-hour cameras, so you can go check in on those. And uh, you and Nikki both will be spending your weekend. No shame. Watching some bears chow down on some salmon. Now, I promise you, I was planning on making salmon for dinner. No way. I promise you. What if I did and I put this on the TV? <laughs> and I'm just watching the salmon. I'm like, hey, bears, I'm eating with you. Yeah, there you go. You and the bears, solidarity. That's right. That is that is actually amazing. Wow, so that salmon the, sounds good, too. It does. So that's at Brooks Falls. And uh, every year, the Alaskan Bear Cam comes back. And it's just around this time where you can watch them. There's nothing more than they're just, you know, showing bears. Yeah, that's all, well, that's all you need sometimes. So this is a, it's a wonderful time of year. So if you ask me again, how come I didn't catch up more uh-huh. on Stranger Things? Yeah. I'll let you know it's because of this. I'll tell you what's going to happen is I'm going to be like, Nikki, did you see that viral TikTok? And she's going to be like, nope. <laughs> I didn't see that. Uh, I didn't see that. I didn't see Thor. Didn't All I saw was anything. the bears. Yeah. And this is more important to me. <laughs> yeah. Let me tell you about, about uh, Flappy. Oh, is that what you're calling a bear? Yeah, one of them That's is Flappy. That's not your uh-huh. name. No. <laughs> yeah. You give them names and one of them will be Flappy. I took a bear tour once uh-huh. in a place called Whistler. And the bear we got to go see, uh, that bear's name was Brownie. Uh-huh. So I'll just say Brownie. They're all Brownie. Mm-hmm. What, is Bra- what is Brownie up to? We're going to find out on Monday. Hudson and Nikki, the worst of the Riot Podcast. I have here... A, uh, a tradition unlike any other that has been finally renewed after years away due to COVID uh, in Spain. Pamplona. Yeah. You know what that's famous for? Oh, the bulls. The running of the bulls. Yeah. They haven't done that since 2019, but they just brought it back. I'm looking at pictures of it. Um, that's a lot of people packed together. That is a lot. No wonder they couldn't do it. No wonder COVID. they took a break. Yeah, that is uh, that is quite the crowd they have there in Pamplona. But uh, they did wind up doing the running of the bulls. I, I, I don't know too much about the running of the bulls. Why does everybody wear white? Um, so it's well, really easy to spot the blood? No, it's the red. Because isn't that supposed to trigger the bull? The red, like yeah. when they when they're doing bullfighting, they have the red cape. Right. So this would be like the bulls are chasing you because I think what they do is they let them go to then go to the bull ring, uh-huh. where something happens. <laughs> hopefully, so wait, hopefully we're not doing that. So what are they wearing? White to try to to highlight blend the in? red. Oh, okay. To highlight the red that they're wearing. See, uh, that is something that uh, that's one of those old old things, right? Where they say that the red is just. The red doesn't. Triggering it's, it's not the bull. about what it's not about the red. It's just like the the movement is what triggers the bull. I and don't so know. they just the red is just traditional. But uh, I don't know. I don't. You know what? I don't know that much about bulls. I don't want the. Okay, listen. This is where I try to make everybody happy, but like. I don't want the bulls to die. Bullfighting's awful. Yeah. But, they, um, yeah, that, well, there's that whole movie about it, isn't it, there? It's not good. Uh-huh. Uh, I think the running of the bulls, if you want to risk it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to die. Uh-huh. And some people get seriously injured. Well. Uh, but if you want to just let them run up the street, but just don't don't run them up to then do the bullfighting. I have uh, good news for you, I guess. Nobody got gored by oh, the bulls. Oh, so they already did they it. They did it, yeah. Ah, this, right. uh, it just happened. On Thursday, yesterday, uh, and so nobody got uh, got gored by any of the bulls. Six Is that good people news? brought in for treatment. Um, a thirty Out of year all old, of those thousands of people, not bad. Thirty year old American man fractured the left arm. Sixteen uh, year old girl oh, lost part of a finger. Yikes! Oh no! In the bull ring where they piled up at the entrance, and then um, other people were injured too. So uh, I mean, it wasn't uh, without its without its injuries, Dude. but. I don't even want to run, let alone let a bull chase me. Yeah, that and, and a whole crowd of people like that. I'd be like, "Hey, hang on, let me um start my Apple Watch. I want to get my rings in. Oh, so before yeah. you start chasing me, hang on. And I'll then we're tell gonna you, get, this is our workout for the one day. One quick way to get your rings in is by letting a bull chase you into the bullfighting ring. Then you you would know how healthy you actually are. Yeah, because really, it's it's one thing to take a walk or a run on your own without something chasing you. Yeah, but if something's chasing you, you really find out what your body can you do. You find out how fast you really can run Mm -hmm. so would you ever uh would you ever do the the running of the bulls no no nope i think uh 
And my slides, how am I supposed yeah. to run anywhere? Yeah, yeah you're right. You, yeah, you know, you wouldn't last a second with the bulls. I would not. Not in this situation. <laughs> I, it doesn't appeal to I, me either, but I can I can understand the appeal. I'd fake an injury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bull, oh, uh, hold up. Leave me alone. I pulled a hammy. <laughs> Some guys have been getting these Gore shin him. Bangs. Gore Hang him. On. He's still healthy. Hang on. This, the, where would be the sport in goring me uh, at Mr. this point? Mr. Bull, did you not hear me say how I don't like bullfighting? I'm for you guys, uh-huh. so please don't hurt yeah, me. Yeah, spare me. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. No notes. The Riot on Radio U. Some uh, sad news yesterday afternoon when it was announced that uh, James Caan, the actor, yeah, he uh, passed away uh, earlier this week. He was 82, mm-hmm. and I was like, hey, I think I remember like him. Uh-huh. And then I, it came to me, he was an elf. He was an elf. That's, he was the dad an elf. I think arguably that's one of his uh, two most iconic roles. Because, of course, the other is being Sonny Corleone in The Godfather. Okay, so you well, can't, there's that, too. That's uh, <laughs> that's probably higher regarded. But, uh, uh, excuse but me. But about as equally as memorable. I don't think so. I think Elf is more yeah, highly uh, regarded. Yes, that, for sure, fair enough. Uh, but he, he, he uh, was known for being Sonny Corleone in The Godfather. Obviously, he played Elf's dad in Elf. Uh, and that was a great role for him. Also, uh, he was in Misery. Remember that one? I don't think I've seen that. That's uh, it's him and Kathy Bates. It's nope. a Stephen King. Uh, oh, that one. Yeah, oh! where she like uh, keeps him prisoner in uh, the bed. Okay, I've I've only seen parody With the hammers, things, parody things the ha- from it. The hammer parts. I know which one you're talking not good, about. Not good. Uh, he's obviously in the Godfather Part Two. Now, this one, Nikki. I don't know if you're familiar with Brian's song. I don't think I am. You want to watch a movie and cry? Is it sad? It is sad. It's a football movie that will make you. I don't care who you are. You are going to shed a tear, probably several, if you watch Brian's song. And uh, this is an old one, The Gambler. The Gambler? Yeah, from is the that 70s. A, is that a Kenny Rogers thing or the no, one day? <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I'm looking of them course, all that's up. what most people, people think of. So he's had some great roles, uh, a very iconic actor, even though, uh, you, you know, he's one of those names, especially at his age. You might not immediately, you might not immediately click who's James Conn, but once you see him, You'll definitely know him from Elf and from The Godfather, and so he's uh, he's had some a great acting career and uh, an interesting guy. And unfortunately, oh, at the age of eighty two, passed away earlier. This a lot week. of people were very sad to see that yesterday. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, you know a- eighty two. Still unexpected though. Nobody was uh, nobody was thinking James Caan was about to go. So that is unfortunate. Uh, but he uh, definitely. We have a lot of great memories. He li- I mean, you're never going to forget James Caan because The Godfather, one of the, possibly the best movie of all time, and he plays an integral role. So can't uh, he'll never be forgotten. And I was thinking maybe this weekend, just maybe uh-huh. that would be worth bringing Elf back. That's for. actually just a nice for in Christmas honor of, in July yeah. in honor of James Caan. I was thinking it might not be bad to pop out a couple of these. I don't know if I can handle the cry that I'm going to get from Brian's song. Just but. stick with Elf. The worst of the Riot podcast. You're welcome. You don't eat much cereal, do you? Um, not too much. Like we do quite a lot of cereal food fights. Mm-hmm. I enjoy it when we have food fights. Yeah. But I guess for breakfast, our schedule's so different because we get up so early. Oh, don't blame it on the schedule. That if I do have cereal, it's more of a snack, like later in the yeah, day. Yeah. Okay. But I wouldn't really have it for like breakfast. I went through a. Uh, I tried recently. To get back into cereal because uh-huh. it's actually not that like it's uh not that bad for it's you. lower calorie. You put some skim milk in there. It's still it tastes fine. And uh, but what I found is that I just don't really like it that much. Oh, you don't? Yeah, I don't think I do. As a snack or breakfast or both? Just uh, well, it would be breakfast for most people, but a snack for us because it was right after the show. I would eat it, and uh, yeah, it just uh, didn't do. A whole lot for me, especially when it's not a fun cereal. Oh, I know. You know, it's not cinnamon toast crunch or waffle Cookie crisp. crisp. Yeah, then uh, I'm not as excited. So when it was honey bunches of oats is what I was going with. Dude, you hated that It's stuff. not as fun. It's, not, it's still, some of it's still sitting there. You would I didn't walk in the break the room and you could tell he was visibly not liking yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, it's, it's not that bad of a cereal. It's just not, uh, I want to, my food shouldn't excite you. It shouldn't need to, but uh, it's it should just be efficient, but. I wanted my food to excite me after the show. I needed something to look forward to. I totally know what you're saying. Anyways, uh, this is not what General Mills wants to hear, of course. Uh, So, but they're thinking maybe if the cereal itself doesn't excite you, 
what if you could just smell the cereal only? Ooh, and like you can a, eat other food that you enjoy more. Like a body spray? Uh, oh, that's actually a good <laughs> idea, too, right? What if you were walking around smelling like Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Not bad. But th- what we have is uh, we have General Mills cereal scented candles. Oh, Does they're that do doing anything that. for you? Well, okay. So cereal candles kind of became popular the last couple of years, and they would be made more by like boutique companies, uh, like Etsy stuff. Yeah. Or at a, at a market and somewhere. And so smell like it, and then have little pieces of candle stuff that looked like whatever the cereal was. Uh-huh. So what, I think, like the gel ones that you could see through? Uh, no, I mean, most oh, looked like, I like a, those. It looked like a bowl of cereal with milk in it Ooh, and a spoon. Wow. And it was a candle. Yeah, it's creative. So that, I think General Mills was like, well, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get in on that. They're going ahead and stealing the, uh, stealing the thunder of all these Etsy shops. Uh, so they have a new line of cereal candles. You can get either Honey Nut Cheerios Cinnamon Toast Crunch, mm. Lucky Charms, yep. Cocoa Puffs, that might smell good, and a Trick Cereal. That's the options. If you're, uh, if you're interested. So uh, let's see, when can we get these? And I think where? they're out. They're out now? Mm-hmm. Uh, like I, so I think someone said they were at Target. At Tar- oh, wow, you can have them in store. Yep, that's right. Target stores nationwide. Mm-hmm. Just when Target was saying, we don't want to buy up a bunch of stuff. We got a clear space for Christmas. Well, and then they, they're getting all these candles in. It takes small shelf space, and they needed to make room for these. Yeah, actually, you know what? This is a... Quite ideal. I don't know how much they are. Do you see a price on this? Um, not yet. Uh, yeah, I don't see a price either. But uh oh, they have three different gift sets for fifteen dollars. It looks like that you can go with. So that's going to come with more than one. See that that actually feels like a good low, like somebody that you feel obligated to get them a Christmas gift. Oh, a gift idea? But you don't want to spend, you know, they're not like your best friend. They're not a family member. So it's just like, so you why know, are you giving for Nikki, gift? I would give Nikki these candles. <laughs> oh, you're great. <laughs> Actually, what it sounds like is whenever you buy like a three pack of something around uh-huh. the holidays, you're yeah. like, I'm keeping two and you can have the one. Then, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Hopefully you haven't seen these also at the store. Uh-huh. So you know, I snag, I split this up. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be upset to get one of these. Well, feel free to text at 877 to Radio U. Would you take the Honey Nut Cheerios candle, the Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the Lucky Charms, the Tricks, or the Cocoa Puffs? Now, the real question is, how do they taste? Uh, I don't actually, I bet you there's a warning on those to, to not, not eat taste them. them. Yep. You ever, uh, I'm, I can picture myself sticking my finger in the wax, letting it dry, and then... Uh, Ew! Oh. Little Hudson would have done that? Little Hudson? <laughs> Big Hudson. I'll do it. I'll try it. (laughs) It's not going to hurt you. Why? Well, it's not going to help you. It might. Maybe it's good. Oh, my gosh. Maybe that's more exciting than the cereal itself. Great. I'm going to have to give you two candles because you're going to eat them. I'm going to eat one. (laughs) Yeah. And then it won't be enough to fill me up I think buying the cereal is still cheaper. Or drink a candle. Lower your expectations enough and you'll never be disappointed. You're listening to The Ride on Radio U. It's nice to know that uh, the United States isn't the only country where politics are a circus, you know. Uh, for example, uh, if you've been following uh, the news in the UK lately, their prime minister has resigned, but not exactly resigned, but he's stepping down, we Until think. Until someone but, new can right. take his place. Uh-huh, that's, that's how I, yes, Nikki. I, uh, I'm also stepping down when some when somebody in my choosing can pick, can take over my mantle at the date that I set, well, which I, I'm not setting now. Okay, I, I get what you're saying about that, but yes, he just said there's no one to go back in yeah. and take his uh, place at this point, but uh-huh. that's the plan. So he's better than nobody, but he's not better than everybody. Sure, apparently, I don't know. So it is it is a whole goofy situation. A bunch of people have resigned, and it's just uh, it's a big uh, it's a big comedy over there. At least that's how they're seeing it. Where uh, I like this, that outside Parliament in the UK recently, uh, Hugh Grant, actor Hugh Grant, yeah, he uh, got somebody with that is, I guess, a a person that does, I don't know, reporting, uh, the, an activist. I don't know what they do. I don't know. I don't follow British politics and the UK that closely. But uh, Hugh Grant tweeted at this guy who's out there at Parliament doing whatever. He's got big speakers and got him to start playing the Benny Hill theme. Which is Benny Hill is a show from the UK. Okay. And I don't know if you would know. I don't even know that much about the show. Although you, I believe it's a comedy. But I can do the song. Normally you can sing everything. Uh, I can do it. It okay. doesn't have words. But uh, it's. 
an actual song? That's a real song. It's actually called Yakety Sax. Oh, I didn't know which that. Which, for some reason, is a very appropriate name for that song. Normally, whenever there's a funny video, like a viral one, uh-huh. and they're speeding it up, yep. that's to that that's song. That's the song. And so uh, that song, even more well-known and synonymous with just goofiness in the UK. And so they were playing that. And so you can hear a bunch of the news broadcasts and stuff from there outside of what would be equivalent to their Capitol building or something. And it's playing this goofy music as a, as if to say, look at this, look at this circus, look at this comedy that we're dealing with. Well, they said news reports were going out and you could hear it slightly uh-huh. in the background. And then, um, you know, they had to take those things down. And so here's my question to you, Nikki. Yeah. If the if we were to do something equivalent here in the United States, take a, you know, just a bunch of goofy stuff is going on at the at the White House, at the Capitol building. And so there's a bunch of reporters and we wanted to make it like something and play some music emblematic of the goofiness. What would be the American version of that um, song? I mean, that song would work pretty well here in the U.S. too. But well, is there would it a, be goofy, goofy or like American, American? Because uh, like we could pick one of those Fourth uh, of July uh, songs, uh-huh. uh, not like the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> like, I mean, like you know, the one that they always choose when you do the fireworks. Uh, <laughs> it's like kind of country. <laughs> oh yeah, like proud to be an American. Something like that. No, no I'm thinking more goofier? like funny stuff. Yeah, like a comedy soundtrack, like a Weird Al sort of like, song. Uh, I was thinking maybe there's. I think the most obvious choice is the Curb Your Enthusiasm music. Oh, uh, what's that one? Bum bum bum. Do 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 do. You know, or I've never knew those things actually were songs to something <laughs> oh, I, I believe the uh this is some some trivia for you mm-hmm. i believe the curb your enthusiasm theme music larry david the creator of the show heard that in a bank commercial really and he says i've got to have this music for the show Wanted and so it? he got somebody to look it up and uh, got the rights to it or you could do also what if the seinfeld music started playing that would be good uh, at the I just don't you know think a that's... serious news report and they're like, it turns out that uh, seven senators are resigning over the scandal. And then it's like, I don't think is that it's as obnoxious though as what uh, they picked for the yeah. UK song. Okay, so it's hard to it's hard to find something as it's perfect. It's hard to be annoying, isn't it? It is. You got to really pre-plan. The perfect. It's just the perfect moment is what it is <laughs> in the UK. I'm glad we could be alive for it. Hudson, Nikki, Radio U's Worst of the Riot podcast. I often find it interesting to get a look behind the scenes at Hollywood. Uh, the fun stuff, as in like the actual behind the scenes of the movies. Yeah. Uh, not the celebrity lives. Sure. I don't really care about that. That's but, disappointing. Yeah, right. That's not fun. <laughs> that is not fun. But uh, it's fun to see what goes into making some of the best movies ever made and also some of the worst movies ever made. And so this is funny to see. Uh, Kevin Feige, you uh, may know the name as the president of Marvel Studios. He is, in many ways, the mastermind behind all of the many, many uh, films and uh, TV shows and whatnot that has come out of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That's all. He's at the head of all of that. Mm-hmm. So he knows what he's doing. And not a lot of misses. I mean, a few, but not a lot in the Marvel catalog. And, uh, of course, Marvel Studios uh, and the Marvel Cinematic Universe now tied in with Sony and their Spider-Man universe uh, because Sony owns Spider-Man, so Marvel had to get, uh, had to get the rights. Uh, Disney and Marvel had to work together to get the rights to Spider-Man. Okay, uh, and so they were involved in making the actual Spider-Man movies that we've seen, of course. Yeah, which, of course, last year's one was huge. Yeah, it was... Uh, that was a, last year, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, it was okay. uh, right around year. Christmas, yep. Yeah. Uh, and so that was huge. That's that's done where, very well for everybody. However, all of these stuff, it involves Venom and Morbius. That uh, Marvel doesn't really have much control over that. That's That's all Sony. And so it's funny to see that Kevin Feige warned Sony... He says, uh, the quote was, not to get too ahead of themselves with their villain, Spider-Man villain oh, universe. Oh, sure, because it's making Marvel look bad. Yeah, he's, uh, <laughs> he tried to tell them, don't, uh, don't get too invested in all of this. It might not be a good idea. He tried. He tried to tell them. And uh, I mean, I guess in a way, the jury's still out because the Venom movies, although not really well regarded as far as, you know, being great movies. I think the first one was regarded better. Yeah. But not necessarily better enough to, like, make a second one. Right. But those are leaps and bounds 
regarded way more way than higher Morbius. than Morbius. That's... Morbius is an actual train wreck, as from all accounts. <laughs> so when you're reading this article, you're like, you're really just mostly talking about Morbius. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he he tried to warn him. Uh, Venom did make money. The obviously the first one made enough money to spawn the second one, and the second one made a lot of money too. Morbius not as much. Uh, and of course, so, uh, Sony has a lot more plans. Uh, just next year, we're supposed to get Madam Web. Uh, you know anything about Madam Web? No, I do not. She's like a psychic oh. uh, lady that sits in With a chair. Web? Yeah, uh huh. Is she sits? I'm I mean, sorry. I don't know. If she it, sits in a chair. Uh, well, she like floats. Yeah, in this like spider in, like, in this like web web designed throne. At least that's what she did in the cartoon. I just want you to know, like, if you're into all these characters, uh-huh. you know, like the ones that are not the more mainstream well known uh-huh. ones. I just want you to know how sometimes how ridiculous it sounds when explaining. Well, you think uh, a spider themed woman who has psychic powers and like floats around in a spider themed chair? Sounds silly. That doesn't sound. It sounds silly. That doesn't sound cool to you. I don't think it does. Uh, what about Craven the Hunter? That movie coming out uh, supposedly next year as well, which is somehow going to turn a big game hunter that hunts Spider Man into a. Here, at least a protagonist for a movie, mm-hmm. uh, and without Spider-Man involved, as far as we know. So again, Marvel we're supposed is to be saying, excited about this. "Please stop, Sony, making yeah. these movies." They can't make them <laughs> stop, uh, but they can give them their professional opinion, which is to not do this. Uh, but Sony Marvel just keeps has to on be doing careful it. too, because now recently some of their stuff. That's right. Has also, All of a sudden, Sony's going to be like, what do you call That's the pot calling the kettle black right there. Because it is also not the best. But hey, you know what? It might not be the best. Still making a ton of money, though. That's true. That is that is undisputed. So they at least uh, at least they've got that going for them. But watch out, Sony. Marvel's warning you. So, are, so is everybody else. You might <laughs> so want to stop. Everybody else is begging stop you. Stop <laughs> wasting your money and time on this. Of the Riot Podcast, Radio U. Uh, I might finally be joining Team Nikki. Yeah, like. welcome to this side. Yeah. I don't know what side it's about, but welcome. It's uh, <laughs> well, your most notorious side that you're on is the Apple side, I would say. You're yeah. synonymous with uh, Apple. Well, I've just always had Apple products uh-huh. for as long as because little Nikki can uh, this remember. This whole time, you didn't know any better. But now it finally seems that you might be on the, the correct side. And I'll tell you why. Because Apple, while they routinely come out with uh, upgrades that don't really seem like upgrades because they just don't seem that impressive, you know, they're at least not going to start downgrading you, which is what it sounds like Google is prepared to do uh, with new Android phones that are going to be coming out uh, starting soon. And this is not necessarily confirmed, but, uh, you know, it's not 100% set in stone. It's being rumored. But it seems very likely Google is going to, uh, and Android is going to start putting out uh, ads on your lock screen. Uh, on your phone's lock screen? On your, uh, and it won't be mine because it should only be, it looks like this is, so it's like a, a pre-installed app that's going to come on new phones. Yeah. Uh, that will be difficult, if not, I, I wouldn't say impossible, but it will be difficult for you to disable and still have your phone function. Uh, it's, a, it's an app called Glance. And so they already do this on phones overseas. Uh, and so they are probably going to start at some point doing this on phones in the U.S. as well, where it will become pre-installed on your new phone when you buy it. And it will, uh, among many things, on your lock screen, it's going to surface ads for you. So does that mean the ads are... Uh like lower the cost of the phone for you or like your monthly <laughs> price or what are you getting out of it? <laughs> it's not you fair. You think they are going to do something nice for us well, like that. Well, it's not fair if they're not. It's similar to, it looks like, uh, you know, if you have a Kindle. Uh-huh. So there's some Kindles where yeah. they have the ad on the front of the screen for like another book uh-huh. or your Kindle. You pay it a little bit extra and you yeah. don't have the ads. Right. I, uh, I wish that was the case. They do say that overseas it looks like uh, many of the phones that already have this are budget phones. Oh, sure. So uh, if you're poor enough, then they're willing to. <laughs> That's everybody's They're willing phones. to exploit your poorness. <laughs> You'll uh, get different wallpaper when you turn on the phone mm-hmm. with glands, headlines, and videos. But then advertisements will kind of be not the only focus on the screen, mm-hmm. but it'll be like in the world of widgets on your home screen. Yeah, it'll just be tucked around the other things. This sounds. This sounds like a nightmare. I don't want. Not only do I not want ads, I don't want headlines and other things either. I don't want my, I have too many notifications as it is. And as I would love to dial back. I don't need more things on my lock screen screaming at me to pay attention to my phone and unlock it. 
uh, which is really what they're actually saying that they say that not only, you know, this will this will have the ads, so it's revenue. But they also think that they're going to get you to be able to, uh, what was their quote, stay a while. Oh, oh yeah. yeah well, so basically hypnotize you. You can, I think you can ignore your lock screen if you just don't look at it. But if not, you're right. Come on over to the Apple side. I just, we have our own problems too. It's sad. <laughs> yeah, that's that's for sure. It's kept me away. But it is, uh, it's just sad that they're, I mean, this is so blatantly just a way for, that Google's going to make money in a way that does, I mean, Google actually kind of backs this company already. So it's just a way for them to make money and really sacrifice anything that actually is going to benefit you. They're this is not going to make things better for you. It's going to make things better for them. They can. So that is, uh, it's sad to see. I guess uh, I'll, you know, there's uh, there's already a test market overseas where people are figuring out how to disable this and so uh and you know what i buy a new phone very rarely anyway so so for in the united states they're saying that might roll out in the next couple of months yeah so just uh be aware if you start seeing ads on your lock screen you've been uh you've been glanced (laughs) you just heard the worst of the worst we'd give you the best of the best but we'd have to find that as soon as we do you'll be the first to know